stuff. He used to like to play football, which I totally disapproved of because I used to say, you should, you, you know, you're not a football player. And, and so he had this friend who used to encourage him to go off to play this football. And I said, but people are waiting on you. You have to go on tour and you should be rehearsing and writing songs. But he liked the football. And of course, that's what damaged his toe that then became malignant and created all this cancer, cancer cells in his body that uh, took him over eventually. In, was it May 77, Bob sustained the football injury, which um, would become the cancer. And, um, it was Bob's passion for football, which really, he kept playing. You know, he didn't stop in May 1977. He was still playing in 1980, you know, which is a bit silly, really. <laughs> He said, Mama, the doctor say I have cancer in my leg and maybe they have to cut it off. I couldn't believe, you know. I said, what? He said, yes, but he said, why would you give me cancer? I never do anybody any wrong. I never do anything that is wrong. What is it? Why? So I didn't really have the answer for that. I could only say, who ja love it? He chastise it. So, you know, whatever comes, we have to just, we have to just face what is before us. He was limping, you know, he was hopping away on his, on his bandaged foot. And um, obviously the first thing I said was, oh, what you done there? And um, he laughed. And that is the nearest he got to, he was basically saying that, well, look, you know, my foot, it's hurt. He must have known he was seriously ill, but he didn't, it, it, he wasn't even putting a brave face on it. He was genuinely sitting there, really chilled out, watching the Olympics on the TV with the sound off. And he was just very, very content. I always remember his last words, though. He grabbed hold of my hand, looked me in the eye, and this massive grin that he had, with a twinkling, warm grin. And he just said, everything cool. And that was it, you know. But just the way he said it, it was everything cool, you know. I heard that he passed away. You know, it was, was, Terrible. I was in Jamaica when it happened, and I phoned here in London, and, and I couldn't believe it. I was totally shocked. I mean, I would never have in a million years thought that he would, that would be the last interview, and a year later he'd be dead. I don't think he should have been made to do that last American tour, because, you know, you've got photos of him in 77 with the bandage, and he's, here he is in 1980 still wearing the bandage which was basically a permanent fixture in that period. So um, I don't know why he was forced to do that last tour. I, I, he looked really knackered when I saw him. I think the kind of people he had around him, he was not advised properly. The record company should have taken better care of him. But there was nobody intervening for Bob, as far as I know. The friends that Bob had around him by then was a very dark energy. He had uh, some bad elements around him that um, was not helpful to his growth or helping him to really sort this problem out. And he was overworked, you could say, because he was touring very hard and he should have had a holiday. I just think that the, the people around him just didn't take any care and they know it and they know how I feel about it, especially one who knows exactly who he is and I'm talking to him now and I hope that he watched this documentary that he can see it. Because he had a big, big influence on Bob and so they could have done something more for him instead of these people out of I don't know where they came from uh, saying that they know how to cure cancer. And when it was too late, he goes to Germany and it was too late. The treatment in Bavaria wasn't recognised by the American Cancer Society at all. This was kind of renegade, you know, holistic treatment almost. And I think Bob was believing, you know, willing himself to believe that he was getting better. Absolutely not the right care for somebody with that kind of money at that point in his life. He wouldn't go with traditional Western medicine because of Rastafarian belief. He was a deeply religious bloke. Mm -hmm.
During his brief lifetime, Bob Marley had risen from the ghettos of Kingston to become one of the most influential and charismatic performers the world has ever seen. But what is so remarkable is how immensely powerful his music remains today, how undiminished his message is, and that it still resonates so deeply. I and I now have words to really talk about Bob Marley for the good that he has done. He's really a prophet, no doubt about that. Yeah.